JFT just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Espresso with me, Darius on Charles, because today's the 5th of April 2022. So yep, welcome everyone, welcome to this um, Tuesday's morning session where we're going to have a very quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. But before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation it should not be considered as such and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product as always i'll give you i'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue Also, just before we jump in into the charts, um, quick um, mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page, which is also updated updated on a daily basis. So you have to check us out here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. So now then guys, jumping into the charts, the first one I want to pick up here is Nikkei 225. We did rebound uh, nicely here. Um, initially here, we, we, we know, we're rebounding nicely here and traveling back above that uh, 200 day EMA. However, uh, we did get a bit of data uh, from Japan today. The household spending numbers did decline significantly. So um, yeah, that raises a few concerns here. And of course, uh, in terms of uh, the BOJ's attempt to, you know, uh, get inflation to uh, to its normal level, which it considers to be a normal level. I mean, around two percent uh, target. But um, yeah, it's it's so far. I mean, it's it's struggle. They're struggling with that, and. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, for now, looking at this picture here, you can see that um, although, yeah, we had some positivity initially, I mean, this positivity probably spilled over from the European and US sessions from yesterday, but um, then, yeah, we got that data uh, and uh, did not really, you know, work well with the, with the with investors. However, uh, from the technical side, we're still keeping an eye on some of these barriers. Uh, I'm not going to, to be honest, I'm not going to, you know, uh, talk anything else here because I already mentioned this and if you watched my videos previously, you'll know that for the upside what I need here is to for not only to see a break of this downside line but also a push of that 28,339 zone for the downside um, I need to see a drop below that 27,604 territory but then I will be careful near this upside line taken from the low of the 9th of March which could still provide support so yeah don't uh, like I said but if you're looking for some let's say even lower levels then certainly a break of this upside line would be needed needed. Uh, China is still um, is still on holiday, but Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index um, is um, trying to push higher here. Uh, I can see that, um, or should I say, actually Hong Kong's Hang Seng is also uh, on holiday. Yep, there we go. I didn't uh, I missed that somehow. Um, true. Okay. So yes. Yeah, so they're celebrated yesterday. They were open today. They are not. So do my my bad on this one, guys. But nevertheless, yesterday we saw uh, the index pushing and staying above that 22,423 territory. I spoke about that level. So basically, right now, uh, what's next here is that I'm leaning a little bit more towards the upside. However, of course, a lot will depend on how today's European and U.S. trading sessions are going to go through. Uh, will we see um, a further continuation move higher? Well, if the, yes, if that's the case, then most likely we could see uh, Hang Seng also traveling further north uh, tomorrow. So, yep, yeah, uh, let's keep an eye on this one. For now, I'm, I'm tar I am targeting uh, this area right here near that psychological 23,000 mark, but slightly above that, we do have that 108 EMA, which could get tested as well. Um, now, jumping into the German index, DAX, uh, um, yeah, so good performance yesterday, pushed uh, to the upside, however, still be remained below that downside line. Um, if we are looking for, you know, further direction here, or at least trying to, you know, get an understanding what the further direction could be, 
Well, I will say it this way. Uh, for now, I am a little bit on the neutral side, uh, just because um, yes, we are still below this downside line. So that means that uh, let's say you know lower levels are still possible. Um, however, that we are still kind of struggling to you know to stay below the 21 day EMA and we are uh, kind of uh, near that downside line as well. So all this is kind of just showing me that uh, the index continues to flirt with that downside line, but it's, you know, it's not really doing much and it's not going anywhere. So uh, if we're still looking for some higher levels, well, wait for a break of this downside line and a push above that 17, oh, sorry, 14,745 14, levels somewhere around here. And then, yeah, we could go for some higher levels um, initially probably aiming for that uh, 200 day EMA or initially aiming for, uh, for the 100 day EMA actually and then the 200 day EMA so let's see how all this is going to play out for the downside uh, it's a pretty straightforward one for me I need to see a drop below this area right here somewhere around that 14,100 zone and then yeah we could go uh, we could go lower the S&P 500 so uh, good performance uh, good performance uh, yesterday pushed uh, higher rebounded from that 23 as you can see here I talked a lot about this I said that if we drop below this 23.6 percent retracement then uh, yeah we could see maybe a bit of a, a larger correction lower um, however we rebounded from that 23.6 percent retracement on the Fibonacci and we pushed higher now um, the cash index currently is sitting at around 4,579 zones own um, so not far from where it closed uh, yesterday but um, right now I would probably like to stay stick to this level here this 4595 area if we pop above it then yes I'll go for some higher levels um, and uh, then of course I'll target the the highest point of March uh, near the four thousand I think this is what's let me just quickly mark this on the chart let me just recycle one of the lines here uh, there we go um, there we go so 4637 territory that's the current highest point of March if we clear that then yes of course this will confirm a forthcoming higher high and potentially more buyers could join in so for now I would say yeah Mm, keep your eyes on this one um, let's see like I said let's see if we can travel further north um, I'm not really you know being very bullish here um, yes we had a good rebound yesterday but let's ever let's take everything with a pinch of salt uh, again the geopolitical situation in the world is not the, the best right now so um, yeah let's and of course uh, the market is um, you know uh, constantly thinking about the the the, the fed and uh by how much uh, it will you know increase its rates Mm, again, so at the moment the expectation is that you know during the next upcoming meeting it will be by uh, around 0 0.5 uh, percent um let's see how that's going to play out of course but um of course the now nowadays the question is not if they're going to raise the rates but by how much um so yeah like i said for now looking at this picture and if, if they continue rising aggressively raising aggressively the rates then of course this not gonna this is not gonna work well for the uh for the mm, indices for the equities in general so yeah uh but again let's not over speculate too much on this for now let's just go from what what we have here and if you're looking for some um if you're looking for some upside then certainly wait for a push above the 4,637 territory right here. Um, you could already start looking at higher levels on a break of this 4,595 area. Um, but um, yeah, if um, if it continues to rally, then certainly this is the level to watch. But for the downside, I need to see a drop somewhere below this uh, 4,000. 525 area right here uh, uh, this is the 23.6 percent retracement on the Fibonacci so yeah uh, a nice good drop below it could open the door towards lower levels now jumping into DXY dollar index um, yeah so continues to push nicely to the upside everything is working according to the plan to the idea that I've mentioned I said that if we pop and stay above this 98.40 zone I will go for some higher levels um, initially aiming for that upper side of the range here which is roughly around that 
99.42 zone. Um, however, if that gets clear, then yes, higher levels could be met. Now, if you remember last week, I also talked about this, that um, whenever we have a range of some sort of like that, um, you always check the prevailing trend. The prevailing trend was to the is to the upside, so or was to the upside, and uh, basically this could still mean that we could pop higher. Um, but if you're looking for those higher levels, well, guys, still wait for a push above that 99.42 zone at least, uh, just so that this you know would confirm a forthcoming higher high and uh, this could at, la at, l at least attract a few more buyers into the game so keep that in mind for the downside pretty straightforward it needs to see a drop somewhere below that 97.80 zone in order to go for lower levels uh, jumping into gold um, so yeah gold um, is still undecided um, it is quite interesting um, as I talked about this yesterday, I said that, well, maybe, just maybe, we could be seeing here a possible, um, a possible descending triangle pattern here, or maybe this little head and shoulders pattern as well. So, yeah, um, a lot of things here are leading, leaning a little bit more towards the downside. My only problem is that, to be honest, sometimes the gold doesn't really all uh, <clears throat> follow the you know the straightforward logic as well so it's kind of really you know heavily dependent as well not only on the you know on 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 the on let's say on the dollar itself but also in general on the um, on the the market sentiment and in general uh, if you know suddenly everybody starts you know jumping into fear uh, or experiencing fear and uh, about the market then yeah uh, everybody's like like I said sees gold as a safe haven and uh, starts moving into that one so like I said I'm not excluding the upside scenario here because if this gets broken if this downside line gets broken then yeah this could potentially open the door towards some higher levels uh, WTI oil um, so WTI oil is quite an attractive one here as well because uh, we have a a nice rebound we had a nice rebound yesterday so as I said before I needed to see that drop below that 98.54 level yesterday I talked about this and I wouldn't I wanted also to see the price staying below that hurdle but we didn't get that and uh, yet there we that's the result we're getting here we are uh, seeing a nice rebound and a test of that 21 day EMA now um, some of you probably are maybe wanting to see the upside on this one but to be honest um, I keep I kept on talking about this. I said that if we break this downside line, then yes, we'll go for we could go for some higher levels. But ideally, for me, this 115 level is the one to watch. But what we can do here right now is probably, uh, you know, take a very very short term approach and uh, basically keep an eye on this area, this uh, 108.70. A nice could pop above it may open the door towards that 115 zone and then yeah we would, we could take it from there um, for the downside we need to see a drop below this 98.54 zone and then we could go towards a larger correction to the downside because don't forget that we're still trading above this upside line so taken from the low of the 2nd of December uh, now uh, jumping into Bitcoin cash Bitcoin cash is still stuck um, still attractive don't get me wrong I mean but uh, it's currently stuck here um, it's still trading above that 100 day EMA it seems like that 100 day EMA is just a perfect area for support um, nevertheless uh, I would like to see a push above that 386 territory uh, in, or 87 I would zone I would say in order to go for some higher levels so for now I'm just observing this one and uh, if we do get that pop my next target is the 200 day EMA uh, AUD USD guys quick update and boom look at this rocket ship to the upside there we go um, I talked about this yesterday guys and I said that in order for me to you know get comfortable with higher levels I need to see a push above this barrier uh, above the um, the highest point of um, of March which is roughly around that 0 0.7540 area and uh, there we go we got that break so we got that move um, yesterday I talked about this I said that in general I kept been talking about this one last week as well 
Um, I said that we're kind of in a bit of consolidation here. The prevailing trend was to the down, was to the upside, and uh, yeah, now we're seeing a continuation move higher. Um, what's next? Uh, we got a test of this 0 0.76, 17, 16 zone. Um, to be honest, it might not be the end here. But again, um, I would say if this gets clear, if this level gets cleared, my next target uh, will be around um, here. Just let me just um, put this one on the chart. There we go. Around here, this uh, 0 0.7645. Now, I do understand it's very close, but to be honest, uh, this marks the inside swing low here of the 3rd of June and the marks the high of the 17th of June of 2021. So uh, at the moment, guys, I would say, yes, I'm leaning a little bit more towards the upside. Um, um, however, given that we already had that strong move here, well, we'll just uh, wait and see here for now. We will just keep an eye on this, and uh, yeah, um, in order to uh, in order to go for higher levels, a push up of that 0 0.70 uh, 0 0.76 17 level is required. Um, if it by any chance somehow falls back <clears throat> below the 0 0.7556 territory right here. Um, now that's where it could become a little bit more interesting for a few more mm, for a few more sellers and uh, yeah this could maybe result into a bit of a corrective move lower. Let's keep an eye on that one. A uh, quick update on GBP CAD. So um, watching this level carefully. I talked about this pair recently guys and uh, this 1.6366 zone I'm keeping a close eye on that one. As you can see it continues to provide support. If eventually we get if we get that broken then you Yes, we will go lower, and uh, then my next target is somewhere around here, near these two levels, the 1.6337 and the 1.6193 zone, and then yeah, we'll take it from there. For now, <clears throat> it still continues to trade below this downside line. Mm, however, in order to go for some higher levels, uh, yeah, we would like to see um, maybe a push at least somewhere above this 1.6464 zone, and then we could aim for that 21-day EMA. Uh, USD CAD. The, um, here we're also approaching this key resistance, uh, sorry, resistance support area. I talked about this and we kind of had this little consolidation. It's kind of the opposite what we had on the AUD USD. Um, we're having this little consolidation area here. Um, the prevailing trend was to the downside, so in a way it kind of is leaning towards the fact that we could see, um, you know, a bit of a, a bit of a move lower here, especially if we clear this highlighted area, which is, uh, let's put it this way, if it drops somewhere below this 1.2450 zone, then yeah, we could uh, consider a move uh, lower. Uh, Euro Aussie. Uh, Euro Aussie is uh, beautifully moving to the downside. We cl we crossed. Uh, we cleared th this hurdle right here. This 1.4420. Uh, oops, sorry. Uh, this area right here. This 1.45 uh, 66 zone 67. I talked about this level if you remember when I was covering a Euro Aussie, and uh, yeah, we managed to reach my other target. <coughs> Uh, which is 1.4425 area, and let me just zoom out here um, all the way back here to this area. There we go. That's the lowest point of July of 2017, guys. So we managed to reach that. This is a very strong area of support. Um, the next potential target for me here um, probably will be somewhere around here, this inside swing high, if I can catch it. There we go. Uh, let me just double check. Yeah. Um, so this inside swing high, roughly around that 1.4306 area, could be a nice good target, but only if we stay below this 1.4425 zone. For now, like I said, given that we already had a quite a decent decline, I mean, it's uh, we have to be very careful here with further declines. But at the moment, uh, we don't get a we have we have not re still received a a reversal reversal signal. So that's why further declines are possible. Um, Euro Aussie, uh, oh sorry, Euro Aussie. Euro Aussie was already here. Uh, yeah, I already talked about Euro Aussie. Euro USD. Um, yesterday, the euro in general took a beating um, against all of its major counterparts. Um, 
Euro was the biggest loser yesterday and uh, obviously understandable why because um, there are talks that there uh, um, of, there are talks of new sanctions against Russia right now and uh, Europe being one of the big partners of uh, big trade partners of Euro of Russia I mean at the moment is yeah it's suffering from that and uh, of course uh, this is putting pressure on on the euro um, and uh, at the moment it, it is devaluating so um, okay okay what can happen here what I said before I said that if we break this uh, upside line uh, this little one here taken from the low of the uh, 7th of March then yes we could consider maybe a bit of a move lower now uh, we dropped below that uh, 1.10 uh, 1.1010 zone um, at the moment, let's probably rearrange these lines. These are no longer needed. Uh, let me just remove these uh, levels here. Um, I said before that in order for me to get a little bit more comfortable with further declines, a drop below this 1.0891 level is required. Um, however, uh, I will start looking at lower, even lower levels if we drop below this the slow of the 28th of March here near the 1.0945 area. If we move below it, then yes, uh, further declines are possible. So let's keep that in mind. Um, again, we'll go slowly on this. We're not gonna, you know, go drastically on on anything. And uh, at the moment, I would say I'm leaning towards the downside, especially if it falls below this 1.0945 area right here. So guys, that's it for this session. I really hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I really appreciate your time, guys, your views, your likes, your comments. I really appreciate that a lot. And so thank you very much. Um, again, once again, apologies for not running this live right now. But um, yeah, at the moment, uh, I think there might be an opportunity for me to run this live tomorrow and on Thursday. However, it's going to, unfortunately, at the moment, it's going to be like this. It's going to be jumping around here a little bit. So... Uh, due to certain um, issues, but um, okay, yeah, I hope you kind of will stick to me, guys, with me, or um, and uh, yeah, you'll continue. I hope you're enjoying my videos. So yeah, thank you very much for that, guys, and I'll see you later. Thank you very much, and bye bye.